So at this year's annual World Bank and IMF meetings, gender has been a much bigger topic than usual. There's a good reason for that. I'm joined by Hannah Brixey, who's Global Director of Gender at World Bank, and by Natalie Akon gabala who is Global Director of Gender and Economic Inclusion for International Finance Corporation, IFC, of course. Hannah, I want to start with you. As I was preparing for this segment, I was reminded of Hillary Clinton's moment in Beijing, now almost 30 years ago, declaring women's rights are human rights. And yet, women's participation in the labor market has changed very little since even that time. Why have there been so many roadblocks? Well, as you said, today is a special moment for at the annual meetings that gender equality is at the forefront. And I think what has changed a lot over the past 30 years is having the evidence how much gender equality matters. Specifically, that countries cannot end poverty without unleashing the full potential of women. And that income per capita could be 20% higher on average if women had the same employment opportunities as men. So that's, that's new, to have this solid evidence to make the case that gender equality is not only the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do. Now, it's true that in many areas, the progress has been extremely slow and uneven. And the example of female labor force participation is right. It was about 50% in 1990s, and it is still 52, 53% as of now. There have been improvements in some areas. I would highlight in most countries, uh, there has been good progress on girls' education and education of young women. So today we see, in, even in higher education, higher proportion of women. There has been good progress on maternal mortality reductions. But in the context of increasing human capital among women, the fact that there has been so little progress on economic opportunities is actually starting. So what are the barriers? Legal barriers in many countries, regulatory frameworks, access to opportunities, including biases among uh, employers or among uh, member, among employees of banks, commercial banks, not giving credit to women entrepreneurs, uh, and also invisible barriers such as gender-based violence, such as the burden of care, especially childcare, the burden of household work. We see that in most countries, women spend on average three times, even five times as much time on household work compared to men. So it's a, it's a range of very complex barriers that need to be addressed to make faster progress. And Natalie, women make up the majority of unbanked people in the world, meaning they don't have access to a banking account. They have less access to digital commerce and the digital economy, and they're online in fewer numbers than men. What impact does that have on gender equity? Simply have an impact, and direct impact in the fact that they have less economic opportunity and they are becoming less and less included in our economy. When you look at the progress in the financial space, what happened is that to some extent, we have seen some progress in terms of women accessing a wallet device, right, in many countries. But this has not translated into access to capital, which is really what a woman needs to grow her enterprise. And when you scroll down to understand why this is not happening, what we've learned working with our different financial institution uh, partners is that there is no understanding and tailoring of product to service women at different stage of their entrepreneurship journey. A venture capital or woman that is starting her business doesn't have the same need than a woman that is on the verge of becoming an industry champion. But bias from investors are applied across uh, women at those different stages of their journey. So our work is really to work with those financial institutions for them first to understand the need that are particular to a woman, provide a specific product that they need, but also for them to be aware of their bias and really uh, assess this pipeline more correctly. The second uh, point to that is that women are facing hidden barriers to participate in the economy. And in most cases, they are not taken into consideration in the way the initiatives are structured. So a woman can have access to a loan, 
But if she's not integrated in a value chain, she doesn't have access to a market to grow her enterprise. In the same way, if she lives in a country where she can drive safe transportation to even go and sell off a, 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 a product, she's not able to, to sell her product and grow an enterprise. If she can't even leave home due to the burden of caregiving, she can't even access uh, safe transportation and yet again sell a product. So it really requires an holistic approach, different actors working together to tackle all the barriers that the women are facing at the same time, and, and so that she can really be uh, empowered and participate in the economy for you. Leadership is necessary. Women need to lead in order to help bridge the gap, and data is very important. There are also, though, cultural and societal barriers. How do you make the kind of impact that you're proposing by 2030, knowing that there are many places where women legally don't have the kind of access you're talking about? So, um, for the World Bank Group now, it's, uh, it's a new ambition to reach more women, to make an impact, and uh, that also implies engaging differently. So, when you look at our newly released uh, strategy, World Bank Group uh, Gender Strategy, you will see that, indeed, engaging women as leaders is one of three strategic objectives, similarly as expanding and enabling economic opportunities, and ending gender-based violence and elevating human capital. So these are ambitious objectives, working with governments, working with the financial sector, across sectors, m addressing any barriers that still exist in the legal and regulatory framework and promoting policy actions that could open horizons for, for, for equal, for equality, for equal opportunities. And, and I think it's so important, the point about cultural norms is that um, you can't go as far as you want with the private sector and pushing financial institution to do more. But if you don't address those hidden barriers that are norms, that are care, that are gender-based violence, that are uh, uh, many, you will not be able to achieve the progress that you want to achieve. And I think this is what has been missing um, and, um, in terms of progress by the public sector, the private sector, and the development community working hand in hand, and uh, uh, disjointing approach. So really pushing under this new strategy for an holistic understanding of the barrier that women are, are facing and working hand in hand to address them will be critical. This is not the first time that even IMF and World Bank have attempted something like this and multilateral organizations for decades have had gender initiatives. Why have they not hit their targets? Has there been a bit of an accountability gap? And what lessons have been learned to help improve as you go on the road to 2030? So I would say uh, the, it's not a question of targets, it's a question of progress and facilitating progress. I think as the World Bank Group, we have many examples of improvements and overall a strong trajectory over the past 10 years trajectory showing that uh, now 95% of operations, for example, on the World Bank side, include specific interventions to reduce gender gaps. But what has been missing is the impact at scale. And that's where the new strategy comes in, where we are more ambitious to accomplish impact at scale by leveraging the knowledge, the investments in evidence. We are able to better make the case why it matters and convince our counterparts in, in, in the public sector and in the private sector. And also, in fact, you, you are right, we are now improving and increasing uh, transparency and accountability. So when you look at the new World Bank Group scorecard, you will see that we are now measuring numbers of beneficiaries also from actions that advance gender equality. When you look at the results framework of the new gender strategy, you will see that we will be measuring uh, also the share of operations of the World Bank that advance institutional and policy reforms toward gender equality, share of operations that focus on gender equality, shares of our country partnership frameworks in countries that set the priorities for our collaboration in countries that also highlight gender equality outcomes. So there is also more transparency and more accountability as part of the better bank approach and also as part of the gender strategy.
Well, Hannah Brixey and Natalie Akongabala, thanks both for being here. Thank you very much. I'm thanks looking so forward much. to catching up next year to report on the progress. And I will, I will ask that question and make sure there has been. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>